a push up. Front brake violation. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Don't touch the front brake. No more of that. Add no more of that. All right. Shout out to Melissa for being a disciplined BI preloader. I love it. I just love it. I love preloader nation. Preloaders, VI preloaders, welcome back to the channel, guys. Always a pleasure to have you guys here with me. And you know this by now, or at least you should. For those of you that are here for the first time, welcome to you as well. My name's Robert. I'm a retired NYPD Highway Patrol motorcycle lieutenant. And the name of this wonderful channel is Be the Boss of Your Motorcycle. Guys, welcome to practice session number 66. Um, I'm out here another beautiful day in Pula, Georgia. The weather's going to be great today. It's going to get a little warm in the 80s, um, but no precipitation in sight. So I am not complaining. Uh, for those of you that have never been to this channel before, um, these practice sessions take place here in Pula, Georgia. I also do traveling practice sessions. I have a lot of stuff scheduled uh, this year. I have Ohio, North Carolina, Maryland, um, California, Jersey. So if you're interested in any of that, uh, you can go to my website. There's information there, right? Just click on where it says practice information. Uh, but here in Pula, Georgia, where VI preloaders practice with me for free, um, we do 14 things all together, right? 14 different things that we do out here. Um, and it's a great place to learn how to actually ride your motorcycle. And I say that because it's done in a positive environment, and that's what Preloader Nation's all about. We're all about positivity. There's no arrogance here. There's no judgment, right? None of that macho crap. First thing I tell people is take your egos and leave them at the curb because we're out here to be better. It's an each one teach one environment. So we're all here to learn. That's the bottom line. We're here to learn. That's first and foremost. And we have fun out here. We really do. Um, but like I said, 14 different things. We do a, a warm-up exercise, which is short starts and stops. We do stops and starts. We do uh, the slow ride, we do trust and believe, right turns, left turns from a stop, single serpentine, the infamous U-turn, figure eight, offset double serpentine, infamous snowman, um, and then we have a bonus exercise, which is usually the maze and a keyhole. Today, I'm just doing the keyhole. Um, and we also have another exercise that I started. I keep adding stuff. It's called to lean or not to lean. And then we do a follow the leader. And then we do a slow race, right? So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a full day, right? But it goes by quick, believe it or not. Um, and I appreciate everybody that comes out here to practice. And if you can't make it out here, watch these videos. You can practice these exercises on your own. Nothing out here is set up uh, to be competition specs, right? Or motor officer specs. That's not what this is about. Because quite frankly, if you can do the stuff that I have out here and you're comfortable doing it, you can do pretty much anything on your motorcycle, right? You can enter any competition because remember, all that entails is these skills, but practiced and practiced and practiced. Now, everybody doesn't want to do that and that's fine, but just know practice is what gets us there, right? Practice is what gets muscle memory built up and so that these things, the techniques or whatever become 
second nature to you. You don't even have to think about them. You just do them. And that's what this is about. This is a perishable skill, guys, so you have to practice. All right? All right, guys, I'm not expecting uh, many people who I think I only have like two people coming. So it should be expedited today, which is not a bad thing, <laughs> right? But the good thing is if it's less people, they get more reps, right? That's how I like to look at it. Um, but when the VIP preloaders get here, we're going to talk to them like we always do. Uh, we're going to find out who they are, where they're from, what they're riding, how long they've been riding. More importantly, how long they've been practicing slow speed riding and what they rate themselves on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the best in slow speed maneuvers. And that number's for them, right? I don't give numbers. I don't judge people. Sometimes I'll say something if somebody's number is way too low. And that's usually at the end of the day uh, because then we do exit interviews here. And then I ask them, is there any change in their number? Again, that's just for them. Sometimes the number goes up. Sometimes it goes down. Sometimes it stays the same. All right? It's important that you know that when you come out here, uh, at the end of the day, I want you to be better. Sometimes just having a better understanding of what needs to be done, that's improvement. All right? It doesn't always have to be techniques. It could be knowledge. All right, guys. Let's do it. All right. What's your name? Brandon. Brandon, where are you from? Uh, Lugolf, South Carolina. How long have you been riding the motorcycle? Uh, I rode for four or five years, probably. Uh, in early 2000s, got into a wreck in 2009. Mm -hmm. Gave it up and uh, got back on about a year ago. Beautiful. What are you riding today? 2020 Road Glide Special. It's beautiful too. Beautiful, beautiful color. Um, more importantly, how long you been slow speed practicing? I've been watching you nine, ten months. Shortly okay. After I got it, I started watching. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a parking lot that I go to occasionally. To okay. Try and, you know, okay. Do what I can, but but I'm ready to do it for real now. Beautiful, beautiful. And if you had to give yourself a rating, one to ten, ten being the best, slow speed. What are you giving yourself? I'll say one and a half to start. You know? One and a half. Pleasure to meet you, brother. What's your name? Joe Gathers. Joe, where are you from? Charleston, South Carolina. Ah, Charleston. I got to, you know what? I usually plan a ride to go to Charleston to go to uh, Rodney's. So yeah. I got I to gotta make that happen. Uh, I got to plan that out before yeah. it gets too, too hot. Uh, anyway, what do you, uh, how long have you been riding the motorcycle? Uh, on and off, probably about two years. Two years? Um, what are you riding today? Uh, 2004 on the Gold Wing. I see you got the Gold Wing shirt representing. Yes, Very sir. good. Cadillac of motorcycles. Um, how long have you been practicing slow speed riding? Uh, since I started watching your videos. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. How long is that? Uh, about a year now. Okay. Good. Yeah. If you had to give yourself a rating, one to ten, ten being the best, slow speed, what are you giving yourself? About like a two. Two. All right. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you again, man. Yes, sir. All right. Let's <laughs> do it. All right, guys. Two VI preloaders today, so it should be nice and easy. I already talked to you about what we're going to do. I'm sure we're not going to do everything. All right, like the keyhole and stuff like that. And that's why I didn't set up the maze because I didn't anticipate that we'd be using it. All right, let's do it. Good morning, guys. Welcome morning. to practice session number 66. Look at that, man. Look at that. All right, I already see where we are. You know, because listen, we all learn differently, which means we all pay attention differently to different things, right? I'm horrible with names. And I think part of the reason for that is when somebody tells me their name, as soon as they say it to me, it goes right out of my mind. I'm not, I'm not trying to grasp it. Um, and for some reason, when I say practice, one time somebody corrected me, I said the wrong number. They were like, no, stupid. This is practice session number, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, welcome. Do either of you guys have an issue being on YouTube? No. Excellent. All right. Um, so today, there's a few things I want you guys to do today, and I want you to focus on doing them all day. Whether you think you need to do it or not, just do it, because we're trying to build some muscle memory today. Um, first things first, safety. Um, I want you to recognize that uh, if you do not wear a helmet out here, the odds on something happening are slim to none. I find that people that are 75 and up, let's say 70 and up, those are the people that when they fall, their body just goes like this and their head hits the ground. I've never fallen at slow speeds on my motorcycle and even come close to hitting my head. That being said, I can have a seizure. Like, you know, anything could happen. So just keep that in mind. If you choose not to wear a helmet, that's fine too. We're all adults, we make our own decisions. Um, if you see me go like this, it just means shut your engine off. One person in an exercise at a time, right? I used to just try to expedite stuff, but sometimes people get caught in the turn and boom, they come right back to somebody. So one at a time. Um, and I want you guys to take your egos, leave them on the sidewalk, because we had to learn, there's no macho in this here, right? It's just not. It's an each one teach one environment. So please don't think that um, I know everything because I don't. So if you see something that you think you can help me out with, 
help me out, Joe, help out Brandon, Brandon, help out Joe. And if you have any questions, please ask them. Don't think it's a stupid question. Somebody out there is thinking the same thing you are, right? And believe it or not, people learn so much from this channel because of you guys, right? If I, yeah, my videos are all right, but people are getting tired of just seeing me do stuff. But if you see riders of all skill levels practicing, somebody's going to see themselves in one of you. All right? Okay. Enough said about that. First five steps. All right, Brandon, I'm coming to you first because uh, it looks like you're going to be that dude. Uh, what's always step number one? Make sure you're in first gear. Make sure you're in first gear. And he said it with confidence. Confidence, we're going to talk about that later. Step number two? He's on the spot. <laughs> Yes, cover the rear brake. Oh man, we got some valid Victorians here today. Brandon, step number three. Preload. Yeah. Preload and keep it loaded. I just did a video talking about preload because when people ask me, now I can just send them to the video, nice and easy. Step number four. As soon as the bike began to move. Step number four. Friction zone. That's right. What about the friction zone? Get right to the friction zone, essentially. Slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. What Brandon's talking about is trust and believe. That's when we get right before the friction zone. But he's correct. Ex step number four always involves the clutch, always, right? And step number five, you said it. Yes. Uh, as soon as the motorcycle starts to move, begin to move. pick up your left foot. Okay, good. The way you pulled up, I could tell a lot about somebody's comfort level at slow speeds just by how they pull up here and stop. Looking good, Joe, looking good. All right, let's keep that up. So I want you guys to follow those first five steps all day today, okay? Also, I don't want you guys putting your foot down today. 10 push-up penalty for putting your foot down, 10 push-up penalty for grabbing the front brake. Now the push-up penalty for the foot down, I just added that, I should have did that a long <laughs> time ago because that to me is, that's how we get hurt. As simple as that, Joe knows that from experience and so do I, right? That's how we get hurt. So. When we, when we get to trust and believe, we're going to talk about it, but we have to understand and trust and believe that what's keeping this motorcycle up at slow speeds, well, at any speed really, but we're dealing with slow speeds today, is power, sufficient power to the rear wheel, right? We're all clear on that. So we know if that's what's keeping it up, if we feel it falling, what do we have to do? We have to supply power to the rear wheel, and that's going to pick it up. How do we supply power? Well, we're already preloaded, so we got the power there. We can hear it. What we got to do is open the clutch a little bit, right? Okay. You guys, any, you guys got any questions about that? Nope. Beautiful. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to do some short starts and stops. And um, if you guys ever need me to uh, demonstrate anything, just let me know and I'll do it. I usually do it anyway for certain exercises. Um, that exercise in particular, extremely important to me, right? Because the cones are 15 feet apart. The distance is not, well, the distance is important, but it doesn't have to be specific. What I'm saying is I'm not, I don't want it to be a lot of distance because what I want you to do is move your motorcycle from point A to point B, follow those first five steps, and trust and believe that it's going to be okay. So what I'm referring to is when, when motorcycle riders feel uncomfortable at slow speeds, they do one of two things. They introduce speed or they put their feet down. We're not duck walking today, one foot or two. So I don't want you guys to, right, I don't want you to do that. I want you to take off nice and easy, and I want you to come to a nice, easy stop. Your goal today, all day, anytime you start and anytime you stop your motorcycle, I want you doing it the way we do it right here. Nice and easy. Because every time you ride your motorcycle, you practice this. Right? That's why I tell people practice for some things is a state of mind. If you go out on a ride, and every time you come to a stop, you're telling yourself, okay, I'm going to make sure I come to a nice, smooth, easy stop. You're practicing. And before you know it, it's second nature. That's what you're always doing. I do it in my car. I try to come to a stop so that my, everybody's head don't do this at the end of the stop, right? That's all about timing, pressure, coordination, okay? So I want you guys to put your tire at the front cone, and then when you get to the next cone, stop at that cone. Don't go past it. So this exercise is also getting us familiar with um, situational awareness. We need to know where the motorcycle is at all times, right? And if I ask you to stop there, stop there. Now, Listen, nobody's stopping the motorcycle but us. So it's not a surprise when it's going to come to a stop. Yet, if you look at most, most motorcycle riders, it looks like it's a surprise because it's like, whoa, and the foot's going like this. That's all about coordination. So as you're coming to a stop, 
Sometimes the balance will work out great when you can pull the clutch all the way in, just come to a nice stop. That's how you want your foot to come down, either like that or like this, right? So that's about brake pressure and co doing things in a certain timed order, coordinated, it's all gonna work out. And when it's time for you to take off, you follow those first five, if you follow the first five steps, there's no way it's not gonna take off slowly if you slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. Boom, but in the friction zone, we're not opening it up all the way. And then once you start moving, be on that rear brake just slightly, all right? And everything will be fine. All right, meet you guys over there. All right, guys, warm up exercise, short starts and stops. Got Joe going first. All right, Joe, right here, head and eyes, straight ahead. Not bad, do it again. All right, take off a little bit slower, Joe. Preload that throttle. Good, keep it there. Keep it loaded. All right, good, that was much better. Give me one more. Head and eye, straight ahead. Keep it loaded. All right, so as soon as you, as soon as you start letting out your clutch, I hear your RPMs go down. Let's try that again. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good, good, good. All right, good job. You can go park. Yeah, you see, as soon as, they, as soon as I say take off slower, then you see the handlebar start to move. That's what I want to see. All right, we got Brandon here. All right, good, a little bit slower. Head and eye, straight ahead. Good, good, good. Very nice. One more. All right, good job. You can go far. Don't pass the cone. Stop right at the cone. Don't pass it. Good. One more. All right. Good job. All right, guys. We're going to move on to exercise number one, stops and starts. But as usual, we'll do a brief discussion about this and something that I saw. All right, not bad at all. You've been practicing? Uh, yes, my, my, um, I'm using my rear brakes only. I can, I can tell, man. It definitely off, shows. I got off of uh, the front brakes when I start watching your video. Yeah. And rear brakes every time I stop. Okay, good. Um, but you're talking about at slow speeds, right? When I'm coming to, even when coming I'm to a, to a stop. stop. Exactly, because see, that I need to be clear. I've had, certain, I haven't, I've had a few people say, Oh, you told me not to use the front brake. They're going like 25 miles per hour. They're on the rear brake. I mean, so yes, rear brake is going to finish everything out. It's going to smooth everything out. It's going to give you more control of your motorcycle at slow speeds. And when I asked Brandon and Joe, and I said, listen, start off a little bit slower. As soon as I told you to do that, your first time, your handlebars are straight as an arrow. When I said slow down, then I started seeing this. And that's what I want to see. I love that because now that's you working it out and understanding that don't put your foot down, just give it a little bit of power and you're good. So good job, excellent job. Um, any questions? Outstanding. All right, so the next exercise we're gonna do, it's gonna be stops and starts. So you guys are gonna go all the way down here. I'm gonna be down here with the camera. I want you guys to ride toward me. I want you to go up to second gear. This is not about speed, so don't worry about it. It's not emergency braking. It's just to get you accustomed to downshifting, front brake or both brakes, and then right before you're gonna stop, get off that front brake, finish that stop out with the rear brake only, right? And then when you stop, just like we were stopping over there, nice and easy. And then before you take off, preload, and that's what I, was, that's what I told you, and a lot of people do it. They'll preload the throttle. Joe, I mean, Jerry, put him in the trailer. They'll, yeah, they'll preload the throttle um, and then as soon as they start opening up the clutch, I hit a preload going down. 
just a lapse of concentration because now they're focusing on something else. All I want you guys to do today is focus. I'm sorry, I should have said that. Listen to your throttle. Now, yours is a lot quieter than yours, but listen to it because I can still hear it. You know what it sounds like by now. You've been riding the bike for how long? Yeah, exactly. So whatever it sounds like when you preload, concentrate on keeping it there. That's your goal. And you should be concentrating so much that if you hear it go down, you bring it up. If you hear it's too high, you bring it down. All right? So that's all this exercise is. Ride toward me, come to a smooth stop, take off nicely, preload, keep it loaded, and then you're just going to come around, you're going to park right here, facing this way. Any questions? Nope. All right. All right, guys, exercise number one. Stops and starts. There we go. Yeah, you're going to be the valedictorian today. <laughs> Good job. All right, so when he took off, he wasn't covering the rear brake. Good job. Nice. Good, good, good. All right, not bad at all. Let's talk about it. All right, good job. Because you guys are already trying to do the slow race, that's what's coming next. Not the slow race, the slow ride. That's what's coming next, the slow ride. I forgot to also t mention to you guys, make sure, it looks like you're doing it already anyway. Make sure that you keep your head and your eyes straight ahead. Of course, I'm referring to when you're going straight. If we're gonna make a turn, which is coming up soon, head and eyes, handlebars. Head and eyes, handlebars. And consistency, if you turn your head and your eyes, keep looking, don't, don't do this. Keep looking, just trust that everything's gonna be okay. You don't need to do this, all right? All right, so, Brandon, when you stopped and then you took off, didn't follow the first five steps. Foot wasn't on the rear brake. Remember, cover it. Once you start get, once you start moving, then you can take your foot off. Again, we, this is what I mean when I say we're always practicing because as you take off, if you're not covering the rear brake and then something unexpected happens, you're going to smash at it most likely, especially with those size 17s. You're going to kill that rear brake. Um, and yes, I know nothing's here. You can clearly see, but we're in a practice frame of mind right now, okay? All right, any questions? Go back to where you went the first time. I'll tell you when to come to me. When you come to me, ride at a normal speed and then come to a stop. We're just practicing this again. And then we're gonna do the slow ride. I'm gonna be walking aside you. All right, I want you to ride at my walking pace. Don't pass me. Keep your head and your eyes straight ahead. Purpose of this exercise, just like I told you guys over there, is not to put your foot down. If you feel like you're going to fall, open up the clutch a little bit. So there's three ways you can do this. You can go in and out of the friction zone. You never have to touch the rear brake, but we're always covering it, right? In other words, open the clutch, close it. Coast, as soon as you start feeling this, work it out. And when you feel, uh-oh, open the clutch, close it. You can do it that way. Or you can just keep the throttle loaded, open up the clutch into the friction zone, and drag the rear brake the whole time. That way is going to actually keep you the straightest. And you can do a variation of both. Whatever you feel most comfortable doing. All right? There's no wrong answer. Watch your RPMs. Make sure they're not too high. Of course, make sure they're not too low. Any questions? All right, let's do it. All right, guys. Exercise number two is a slow ride. Got Jerry going first. Stop. All right, ready? Do it. Excellent, throttle is steady. Head and eye straight ahead. Good job, Jerry. Beautiful, ready? Let's do it. Excellent, nice smooth throttle. Good job, Brandon. Excellent job. Throttle's not too high. Throttle's not too low. Head and eye straight ahead. Beautifully done. All right. Ready? Let's do it. Excellent. Excellent. Good job. 
Not much to say, guys. Excellent job. Throttle steady, head and eye straight ahead. Beautiful. All right, guys, exercise number three, trust and believe. We already had a discussion with them about if they, tr if they trust and believe, the answer is no. <laughs> Where you going? That way. <laughs> You're not looking like a veteran today, Jerry. No, I don't feel like that. <laughs> All right, you know what you're doing? Uh, yeah, okay. I got first gear, fast brake, reload, and then squat. Yep, right before the friction zone. Pick up your foot. Don't let that motorcycle move an inch. Do it again. Trust and believe, baby. There we go. Come to a smooth stop. Good job. Let's it out. All right, Jerry. Yeah, we're gonna. So when next time you come up, don't 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 start leaning. Keep the motorcycle straight up. It's gonna make it easier for you to be right where you want to be. All right, you know what you're doing? I mean, we're gonna figure it out. Yeah, we're gonna figure it out. First gear, yes, covering the rear brake. Preload the throttle, keep it loaded. Clutch right before the sweet spot. And when you're ready, pick up that foot. Make sure this motorcycle's not moving an inch. Head and eye, straight ahead. Let it out, let it out, keep it loaded. Now you heard the throttle, right? You heard it going, go, go, go. RPM's too low. But you trusted and believed. Huh? You definitely trusted and believed. Oh yeah. More throttle, that's it. Head and eye, straight ahead. Look at the camera. Good. Pick up the foot, keep it loaded. Come to a stop. Nice. Reload, baby. All right, that's 20, I mean, that's 10 push ups. So, what, what's happening there is you're making a turn, right? Remember, in those instances, it's just like what I talked about. As you're coming up, making that turn, you should be dragging your rear brake while you're in the friction zone at the same time. That's gonna, that always is gonna make your motorcycle wanna stay straight, it's because there's two forces fighting against one another, the brake and the power. It's a gyroscopic machine, so it's making it rigid. So that's how you're gonna make this turn nice and easy. That same skill is gonna help you when we have to make right turns or left turns. That's why I always have you guys start this way because I'm kind of warming you up for it. All right, so head and eye straight ahead. First gear, correct? Preload that throttle, keep it loaded. When you're ready, pick up the foot, make sure the bike's not moving at all. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Good, keep it right there. Pick up the foot, trust and believe, Don't, easy. I got my throttle too high. No, you don't. Remember, hold up, let it off. No, you don't have to cut it off. I'm just, oh. It only seems too high because you're holding it for like eight seconds. Hold it. Soon as you hear it's high enough, your clutches should already be right before the friction zone. Just pick up your foot. Trust me, it's not too high because the only thing that matters is how much power you're going to allow to go to the rear wheel with the clutch. Too low is the issue, not too high. Uh, I'd rather have more. See, because it's already going down. Keep it right there. Okay, good. Head and eye straight ahead. Let it out. He's nice and easy. Good. Come to a stop. All right, try it again. What do you got? A throttle lock there? Yeah. yeah, don't use that. Don't use the throttle lock because you need to be, you need to know how to control your throttle. Okay? All right. Give me some more throttle. Good, 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 good. Come to a stop. Easy. Remember, you're stopping the same way you stopped there. One more time. Good. Let it out. All right. Now, remember, that's why you need to be right before the friction zone. Right there, you didn't let the clutch out. Preload. Preload. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Pick up that foot. Good, 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 good. Come to a stop. All right, good job.
All right, let's do that again. Last time, once you're done, see those high cones down there? You'll see them. You can head down there after you do this exercise. Right. Yep. Head and eye, straight ahead. All right, come to a stop. <laughs> Good job. I just want to run off. Yeah, I see. Good, friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake, friction zone. Straighten out. There we go. All right, last time, and then you're going to head down there. I, you know what? I, I, I can understand that when I was straight like that, mm -hmm. I can take off nice and slow yeah. using my rear brake. Mm -hmm. But then just this quick stop and start, I mean, it's almost like I'm not trusting it enough to pick up my foot and move. What do you mean? What do you mean? Like when I'm using my throttle. Mm -hmm. To me, it's like it's better for me to just leave my throttle where it's at and then let the clutch go and then use my throttle, then stop. Well, yeah, that's what you should be doing. You hold, you're preloading and keeping it loaded and then you're using the clutch to make the motorcycle go. That is what you're doing. All right, let's try that. That's exactly what you're doing. Preload. But see how low your arm, see how low that is? You don't want it too low because when you pick up your foot, you want to make sure you have enough power to catch the bike because it's falling. Don't move. Good. Head and eye straight ahead. Pick up that foot. Let the clutch out. See? As soon as you feel like you want to put your foot down, you should be opening up the clutch. Let it out. Keep it loaded. Come to a stop. Now see right there, your bike almost shut off, and it almost shut off because you open up the clutch, but you're letting your throttle go too low. Keep it loaded, you gotta keep it loaded. Listen to the throttle, and that's why I want you to have a higher RPM. Good, good, come to a smooth stop. There you go, Joe, remember, it's not an emergency stop. I want you to, I want you to remember that. It's the same way we were stopping there, nice and smooth. All right, all right, good job, you can head over there. All right, last time, and then you can head over there. Now, you're moving. You're ripping me off, Jerry. Don't move at all. Pick up that foot. Don't let this bike move at all. Good. There we go. Woo! Nice, Jerry. Nice. That's what it should look like, guys. That's trust, and that's believing. All right? He was talking about he doesn't really, he trusts it, he believes. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to move on to exercise number four, right turns, left turns from a stop. But we're going to talk about this first. All right, guys, so I'm telling you something. That exercise, it's, it's, I think it's vital, right? The first exercise we did, I think it's huge. It's, it's, it's the bread and butter as far as I'm concerned. Fundamentals of slow speed riding right there. Second, I would say trust and believe because I, I want you to think about this. If you feel odd sitting still, picking up your foot and doing this, it's not going to get any better once we start leaning the motorcycle in turns, right? Because that's the skill that you need to make you feel more comfortable leaning at slow speeds, right? Um, so that's something I want you to practice and get more comfortable with. Now, the third time, third time, second time, whatever, you look much better coming around because now you're understanding the concept more of dragging the rear brick. Remember, we're not stabbing at it. We don't do anything herky-jerky at slow speeds on the motorcycle. That includes with our hands and with our foot on that rear brake. If you start, we already don't like the motorcycle going slow. We don't like the way it feels. It doesn't feel comfortable. So if you start adding something like this to it, you're really not gonna like that, right? I know I won't like it. So that's why everything we do on the motorcycle is subtle. Part of the reason why I tell everyone to put their egos over there is because I tell us we're all ballet dancers out here. And that's how we're moving on our motorcycles. With grace and fluidity, everything is smooth, right? If you do everything smooth, it's gonna work out much better than this, you know, kind of crap. So when I say drag the rear brake, it's very light pressure, right? You shouldn't be fighting, the bike shouldn't be fighting the rear brake, it should be working with it, right? Um, so, anybody have any questions on that? All right, looking good, and my bad, I always forget to tell people to come to a stop, and twice Brandon was ready to go, but came to a stop, and because I yell at people go, Rrr! no, just come to a nice easy stop, just like we stopped here all day, that's what we're doing. 
That brings me to this exercise. And guys, all of these exercises build on one another. That's why we don't start here. If we started here, this, or, this exercise already has the highest failure rate, but it would be even worse if we started here. But everything that we've done leads up to this. This is exercise number four, right turns, left turns from a stop. Um, and quite frankly, what is this? If we're doing it not from a stop, which you'll do first, approaching it. If I'm approaching this, Joe, what exercise am I doing? Approaching it. What exercise am I doing that we just did? Slow ride. That's right. Exercise number two. That's what you're doing here. Head and eyes, handlebars. What exercise am I doing? I'm still doing exercise number two. So I want you to get into your head that nothing changes. We're just turning your handlebars. But that's why I had you guys approach that exercise from the side. And I wanted to see where you were. So at first, Brandon was like facing this way because he did not want to turn those handlebars, right? But if we know, just do exercise number two and drag the rear brake. You're going to be fine. Remember, your motorcycle balances more with the handlebars turned. But motorcycle riders are still reluctant to turn the handlebars. They want to be straight. When this is when you balance it. You ever see me just sitting still sometimes, or anybody for that matter? You'll never see that with the handlebar straight. It's always gonna be like this. It creates like a tripod effect, right? Okay, but I'm not expecting you guys to do anything extremely slow. For the most part, six to 10 miles per hour is where I live out here, except here. Here, this is between one and three, right? One and three miles per hour. When you guys make this turn, I want you making this turn straight up. I don't want you leaning the motorcycle to make the turn. That's why I bought these taller cones, because people kept, they wouldn't hit them, but their bags would go right over the little cones. As far as I'm concerned, you hit it straight up. When I make this turn from a stop, I put my front wheel right here. But you don't need to do that. This is not a competition. If you're more comfortable back here, start it from back here. If you're more comfortable off of this line to make a left turn, you want to be over here. And to make a right turn, you want to be over here. That's fine, too. Just don't lean the motorcycle. Keep it straight up. Turn your head and your eyes. And I don't care. But the more you practice this, you're going to be like, and it happens all the time. If you look at somebody that comes to my, my, my uh, practice sessions often and you look at their first practice session, they may have been there. Now they're beyond this line stopping, right? Because now most, not going to say most, some people, once they get here, they say, what's next? Where some people say, I'm fine right here. And that's fine too. What's not fine is saying I'm fine right here. That's where most motorcycle riders are. All right. So um, eight steps here. Step number one, make sure it's in first gear. I'm talking about from a stop. Cover the rear brake, preload the throttle, and keep it loaded. Um, clutch. Step number five, head and eyes. Look where you want to go. Don't look at my, don't stare at my cones. I don't care if you look at them. Just don't stare at them. Some people are obsessed. Head and eyes. Look at that. It says field 12. Well, actually, there'll be a camera there. You can look at the camera. Same thing going that way. Look at the camera and keep looking, right? What's the three C's of preloadination, Brandon? Uh-oh, here we go. What's the three C's of preloadination? Yeah, man, you always got to come to the head of the class first. Confidence, control, and consistency. So I'm talking about consistency here. When you preload your throttle and you keep it loaded, that's consistency. Keep it loaded. When you turn your head and your eyes and you look, consistently look. Don't go like this. And don't think if you have on dark glasses, I can't, I can't tell if you're looking at the cones. I can always tell. Right? <laughs> I can always tell. All right? Step number six, slowly release the clutch into the friction zone. Step number seven, as soon as it starts to move, pick up your foot. Sounds familiar, right? And step number eight, turn the handlebars, right? What determines the radius of our turn? Three things determine the radius of our turn on a motorcycle. Speed, that's the number one contributing factor to wide turns. Too fast. How much we turn our handlebars, obviously, and how much we lean the motorcycle. We can forget about that because I don't want you leaning here. Straight through. So the first, and when you make this U-turn, U-turn. When you make this turn, your goal is to be somewhere in the middle of this lane. If you're over here, that's fine. But what most people do is they start to turn. They really don't want to turn the handlebars. But as soon as they feel, uh-oh, either they put their foot down and drop the bike right here because they pull a clutch all the way in, or they open up the clutch and they shoot out like this. I don't care if you hit a cone today. should have told you that. So if that's you, if you shoot out, I'd rather you do that than put a foot down. That's not going to hurt you, right? You have a brake, use it. But don't 
try not to put your foot down. I want you to understand, I, trust me, I get it. I'm asking you not to do something that instinctively you want to do. Try not to. Practice is going to take care of that. Trust me. Okay. First time, you're going to go. I just want you guys to go straight through. We'll do it a couple of times. Make sure you're straight up and down, seeing where you end up, not going too fast. Then I'm going to have you stop. Stop wherever you want within the three cones. I don't want you all the way over there. And then same thing, left turn. Then I'm going to have you stop, make the turn, and stop. This is addressing what you were going through, except here, we're straight up. So I want you guys to understand that being able to turn your bike straight up takes way more skill than leaning and turning the bike. Way more skill. And that's why we focus on no lean here. Because sometimes it's not appropriate to lean the bike. And most motorcycle riders, because they're not comfortable doing that, they're just going to do a Joe. They're going to walk it because they think I don't see it. <laughs> but we're not doing that, right? So I want you to make the turn. Make sure you straighten out your handlebars. Stop like you were stopping right here. Bing! Or... Bing. Nice and easy. Now, I, I recognize we're on two wheels. Sometimes the balance is not going to work out. So if you're coming to a stop and it's one of those times where you actually have to put the right foot down and you have to grab the front brake, that's fine. Your, your handlebars are straight. You're not barely moving. I'm not, you know, we got to use some common sense standards. I'm not that much of a stickler. And then we're going to do the same thing going right. Any questions? I'll demonstrate it. First going straight through, then stop, then stop and stop. Not stop and shop. Stop and stop. First gear, cover the rear brake. Head and eyes, straight up. Exercise number two. Now that's exercise number two into what we did right here, the warm-up. Smooth stop. Head and eyes, look where I'm gonna go. Reload. And when it's time to come to a stop, Straight now. So listen to my throttle as I'm stopping. You hear the throttle's up, right? It's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. My throttle doesn't go down until I'm actually stopped. Why? Because I'm in the friction zone the whole time I'm moving, but I'm on the rear brake. That's making sure I'm staying true. If I come off of that rear brake, or if I pull the clutch all the way in, that's when you're gonna start getting like this, right? I wanna make sure I'm true. So that's what you do, and that's all you have to do through this. So, and you start to make this turn, my foot's on the rear brake, and I'm applying the rear brake from the start to the finish. I'm dragging it the whole time, right? Because the distance I'm going, it's nothing. It's not like we're on the highway and I'm dragging the rear brake, right? And I want you to watch my rear foot. Sometimes you'll see me take off and it might look abrupt. But that's why I'm on the rear brake. The rear brake's going to correct that for me. I might need that quick abruption because I feel like as soon as I start to move, the motorcycle's going the way I don't want it to go. So I'm going to open up the clutch a little bit to get me where I need to be, but not too much rear brake. Did you see my foot moving on my rear brake? Did you? No, Jerry said he didn't. If you saw my foot moving, it's very minimal. And that's what it should be. I shouldn't see this. And that's what people have a tendency to do. Just drag it. Small variations of movement. That's what we need to do on a motorcycle. Any questions? All right. Now, I was just being humorous about, you don't expect me to go through that. And do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. And you know, sometimes it helps people to see it happen on their bike and we all learn differently somebody was like do me a favor do that on my bike if I see you do it I'll know it's possible everything out here is possible for so again if this was set up for motor officer specifications some of the stuff out here is not possible on your motorcycle right there's there's a motor unit in South Carolina that they ride gold wings so their course 
It's not the same as normal motor officer courses. There's no 18 foot turns in there, let's put it like that. But this, you're making a turn straight up. So I do understand your handlebars can't turn as much as mine. So what does that mean? You have to compensate for that differently. What did I say the three things control our turn? One of them is handlebars, how much we turn them. So if your handlebars don't turn as far as mine, what that means is you just have to start your turn earlier, but not so early that you're hitting this cone. That's what I mean by situ situational awareness. You need to know where your motorcycle is, what it's capable of doing. So you, can t you could still turn your motorcycle from the middle. You have to start turning about right here. If you get about right here, there's no way you can make this turn straight up. I can't make it on my motorcycle. I can't make it turn straight up. Now I would have to lean. So just lean your motor, I'm sorry, turn your motorcycle handlebars at the appropriate time and you're fine. All right? Anything else? Oh, that's all we can do is try. But trying becomes doing as long as we practice. There was a female that came out here and man, she was getting so frustrated with herself. But prior to this, I asked her, when's the last time you practiced? She doesn't practice. So I said, don't get frustrated if you don't practice. If you practice all the time and you're still not getting it, then you've earned that frustration but you get out what you put in. All right? All right. Head and eyes, Jerry. Straight up. <laughs> Straight through. Head and eyes. All right. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Rear brake. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good. Good. Next time I want some head and eyes. Straight through. Straight through. Good. Good head and eyes. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Rear brake. Rear brake. Too much speed. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Trust and believe. Go back around. We get more reps because we got less people, so slow down. Good, good, good. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Don't lean. Keep it loaded. Watch that foot. <laughs> Man, I saw that damn ankle again. No, you did not this time. Yeah, I mean, I saw it. I had a flashback, man. I had a damn flashback. So right there, you're leaning. And then at the last minute, you just squeeze the clutch in. So remember, this is exercise number two. Slow ride, that's all you're doing. Stay, keep, keep it loaded, stay in the friction zone the whole time. If you start feeling uh-oh, you see what Brandon did? He went like that. If that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do. Don't put your foot down, all right? All right. You know what I felt? All right. The I pucker felt, effect? No, I felt. <laughs> <laughs> I felt when, when you told me to look at the camera, mm -hmm. that's when uh, exactly. I lost everything. Exactly. That's and I mean, think about it. If we're driving a car, we don't drive like this. But for some reason, when we're on a motorcycle, we have a tendency to look like this, when this is the worst thing you could do because this throws off your balance. This is why tight rope walkers don't look down. It's not because they're scared of heights. It's because we balance better when our eyes are even with the horizon. This is why if you try to balance a broom, you look up at it. If you look at your hand, good luck, right? All right. But trust me, I know it feels uncomfortable to look here, if you think about it logically, it, it doesn't make sense why we would be uncomfortable because that's where I want to go. Head and eyes, trust me, it helps. This is why we practice. We have to reprogram your brain. Good, preload, good, good. There we go, open up the clutch some more, good, nice. That's even what, the way he just did there, taking off. If you can take off that smooth with the hand, starting with the handlebars turned, he's, he's already getting more comfortable with this. All right, good. Exercise number two. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Trust and believe. Now I'm watching his hand. As he's turning, his hand's going like this on the clutch, and then he pulled it in. That's when his foot went down. Straight through. Good. Good. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Rear brake. All right. And this is why we're going to use the rear brake too at the same time. Straight through. 
I can believe, Jerry. So right there, as you were making the turn, I saw his hand going like this, and then you just went like this, and that's when your foot came down. Just, I feel like it's getting better. It is. First so, time you didn't, you went straight through. Right. Wherever you are in the friction zone, as you're approaching, stay there. Wherever you are with your throttle, stay there. Just use the rear brake to control your speed. Turn your head and your eyes, look at my camera, everything else is gonna work out. Good, stay right there. Stay right there, keep the throttle there, rear brake. Too much speed, too much speed, keep it turned, keep it turned. All right, it's getting there, it's coming. It's coming. We're not looking for perfection out here, we're looking for progress. Straight up, straight through. He didn't, he didn't follow the first five steps coming here? Good, stay at that speed, stay at that speed. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. That's what I'm talking about, Joe! Good, stay right there, turn the handlebars, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. You're looking down, I see you're looking down, Brandon. That's what I mean when I tell people, I don't need to see your eyes. I saw his chin dip a little bit. As soon as his chin dipped, he went right towards these cones. Nice. All right, come on, Joe. Broken clock is right twice a day. Do that again. Good. 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 Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Excellent. Excellent. That's right. Good use of the rear brake. Good, good, slow down, slow down, head and nice. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, you're good, you're good. I'll have you stop, I'm gonna have them just go through. Head and nice, Jerry. So I'm watching you not following the first five steps. Every time you take off, both your feet come up at the same time. When one should be step number two, cover the rear brake. All right? Same thing that you just did. Nothing's different. Same way you were taking off over here. That's why over there I told you slow down because I don't want you to take off abruptly. Take off the same way here and then apply what you just did. Nothing's different, Joe. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Good use of the rear brake the last time. It kept you in control. All right, we're not doing exercise number three. <laughs> we're not doing trust and believe. As soon as it starts to move, then pick up your foot. Good, good, good. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Straight through. Good. Head and eyes. Turn them. Keep them turned. Keep it turned. All right. Getting better. Getting better. See, he's doing this with his handlebars. Consistency. Turn them and keep them turned. All right, let's try that again. Remember, when you're coming to a stop, stay in the friction zone. What's happening is you're stopping and as soon as you feel, uh-oh, you just put the brakes on and that's why you're falling. Friction zone, friction zone, rear brake, rear brake, come to a smooth stop. Good, good. All right, so what ha what's happening there if you're not opening up the clutch enough? Open up the clutch a little bit more. If it gives you a little bit too much, don't worry about it. That's why you're covering the rear brake. Rear brake's gonna correct that. There we go, head and eyes, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Nice, work it out, baby, work it out. Good job, good job. All right, so when you're turning the handlebars, you do not like the way that feels. And so you're turning like this. Yeah, it's like, it's awkward to do, to 
try and lock them. Exactly. Well, you don't have to lock. I want you to know that. The only way, you, the only way you're going to have to lock is if you're waiting late to turn. If you start your turn early enough, you don't have to come to a full lock, so don't worry about that. But even if you are full lock, it doesn't matter. As long as you're keeping power to that rear wheel and you're using the rear brake, you're fine. Just keep it turned. Trust and believe it's going to be all right. Doing that without leaving the car. I told you, it's, it's much harder. But that's why we're here. Straight through. Good, slow down. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. All right, too much speed, but I'll take it. I'll take it for now. Nice stop. Come to a stop over here, Jerry. Excellent. Slow down, slow down. Good, good, good. Head and eyes, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. I wasn't prepared when I started that. All right, so even when you were riding around here, right before you were gonna make this turn, your eyes, just, you're doing this. So I want you to always practice turning your head and your eyes before you commit to a turn and continue looking in that direction. Your peripheral vision will already pick up the ground. You're, walking over, you're already scanning. You can see nothing's there, nothing's there, but you're scanning in front of you. If you keep looking like this, stuff out there happens quick. So you wanna always turn your head and your eyes and keep them turned. So if I see you don't do it making a turn like that, it's a habit. We have to break that habit. It's dangerous. And that's why you're having a hard time doing it here. Although, you were doing it last time, you're still looking at the cones a little bit. It's not gonna happen overnight. But good job, good job. You're working it out now. You feel falling, you're not putting a foot down. So keep that up. Let's try it again. Good, 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 good. Open the clutch more. Keep it loaded, you're looking down. You're looking right at that cone. All right, from a stop. Same thing. Head and eyes. Good, good, good. There we go. He picked up speed at the end. That's the only thing that took him wide. Come to a stop right there, Jerry. Perfect, perfect. All right, every time you stop, you're stopping like, stop just like you were over there, nice and easy. Now that time, what you, right from the start, sometimes if you start out something wrong, it makes everything feel, you know, it kind of messes everything up. You're doing exercise number three almost. You're picking up your foot and the motorcycle's not moving. No, as soon as it starts to move, pick up your foot. All right, as soon as it starts to move, but not before it's moving. All right, same thing, nice and easy, head and eyes. You don't have any issues turning the handlebars. Straight through. Yep. Head and eyes. Get your head up. Look at my camera. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Good. Good. Good job, Joe. There we go. All right. Excellent job on that last turn. So that one, you made the turn, and at the end of it, you got nervous. So you open up the clutch. It pushed you out wide, but you stayed in the exercise. So remember. I was just trying to get out of there. <laughs> remember, you don't need speed, right. you just need power. Okay? All right, let's do that again. Good, head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Too much speed, slow down, rear brake. There we go. Well, not that much rear brake, but that was actually good. We gotta stop. That's the catch coming next, stopping right here. All right, I want you to come to a stop over here. Nothing changes. Straighten out the handlebar before you stop. Head and eyes, Joe, you're looking down. You're looking at your instrument cluster. Tell me why. Uh, no, it 
really, I was looking, I was, I was looking at that cone because I was heading straight for it. <laughs> okay. Good, good. Head and eyes. Watch that foot. You and that damn foot, man. You and that damn foot. Let me try something with that bike. All right. All right. What happened there? I'll pull the clutch in. There you go. It's never, I can be blindfolded and ask you the question and know the answer. Because it's not going to fall with power to the rear wheel. All right. What I was trying to, I was trying to, I was trying to not have that speed going through because I know once I made that turn, if I didn't pull the clutch in, I was going to just keep going. No, Stop. no. See, again, now we're talking about the same thing you did before, whereas I didn't have any, I had to pull it in. No, you never have to pull it in. Remember, the, the amount of travel into the friction zone is going to control how much speed. So just because you just because you have power going to the rear wheel doesn't mean it's going to be so much power that it pushes you out. Friction zone is minimal power, right? And even if it's a more even if it's more power, you're in control of that. So if you feel like it's going too fast, that's why you're covering the rear brake. Also, if you feel like it's going too fast, you can squeeze the clutch in a little bit. Don't squeeze it in all the way in a turn because it's going to fall. The only thing keeping the motorcycle up at slow speeds is power to the rear wheel. If you pull in the clutch, it's going to fall. Had a nice. You're looking at those cones. So what Joe said, he said the same thing again. If I didn't pull in the clutch, I was going to go straight out. I don't care if you go straight out. I don't want you. I don't want you dropping your bike, your bike, and putting your foot down either. That's worse. I'd rather you go straight out. All right, come to a stop. Good. Rear brake. Rear brake. Rear brake. So I. You slow down at the scariest time, which is crazy. But then you right the bike, and that was excellent. All right, we're going to go right next. We're going right next. Head and eyes, head and eyes. Look at my camera. So we definitely got to work on the head and eyes. You're looking down the whole turn. If you look down, the motorcycle, you're going to have more of a tendency to want to fall. Your guards are doing their jobs, definitely. That's why we have them. Nice. Good. Slow down. Head and eyes. Look at my camera. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Yeah, listen, listen to that throttle. Good. Stay at that speed. Stay at that speed. Head and eyes. Don't lean it. Getting better. Straight through. Stay at that speed. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Rear brake. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. All right. Straight through. Stay at that speed. Stay at that speed. Head and eyes, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. That's what I'm talking about, Brandon. Nice. Straight through, slow down. Good, good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Uh huh, right's are better than his left. Good, stay at that speed, good. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. That throttle, man. That throttle. Hard when it's, you know, and you know what it is? When you go to make the turn, the last one you did was perfect. I can already see your right turns are better than your lefts. Yeah. Like you're more comfortable turning right. You actually stay turned. Right here, you weren't turned enough, and then all of a sudden you went like this. And that's when your throttle went down. And that's because you're looking at these cones. You see you're getting close to them, and that's when you jerk the handlebars. Your head and eyes should be right there. All right? Well, I don't want to hit your precious cones. They, they don't mind being hit. They just don't like being stared at. All right, so you're good. Hey, Joe, your bike's on. The bike's on. 
Come back in, come right back in. There you go, Jerry, show them how it's done. Good, 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 head and eyes. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. There we go, work it out. All right. All right, right turn. Good, keep it loaded. Head and eyes, head and eyes, head and eyes. Before the battle with his instincts in one. Come to a stop right here. Straight out, beautiful. All right, right turn. Good. Rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Keep it loaded. There we go. All right, after this, single serpentine. Oh, you can take a break, get some to drink. Nice. All right, come to a stop. Good, look at my camera, keep looking at it. Turn too early. Try it again. We gotta know where the motorcycle is. If that's a lamp, lamp pole or, you know, light pole, hydrant, whatever, that ain't gonna fall over. All right. Good, look at my camera, keep it loaded, don't lean, you're leaning. Well, and don't stop with the handlebars turn. Try one more time. Straight through, straight through, Joe. Stay at that speed, keep it loaded, rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Head and eyes, you're not looking at my camera at all. Good job, Joe. All right. Come to a stop. Nice and easy. Good, good, good. Ooh, keep it loaded. Bro. Keep it loaded. All right, go get some of the drink. Take a break. Good, good, good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. All right, you're going a little too slow right there. I was going to want to go straight through a stop. Straight through. We ain't gonna do, let me help you back up. We ain't gonna do stopping until we get straight through down, you know what I mean? That last right turn though was, oh my God, much better than the last one, I can say that much. Yeah, I'll do it here. All right. Good, good, slow down, slow down. Good, keep it loaded, rear brake, rear brake, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. There we go. Come back in here and do it again. I know, man. A broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> That was beautiful. Do that again. Copy and paste. Good, good, good. Keep it loaded, 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 keep it loaded. Good, good job. I saw that foot get ready to come down, but it didn't. Good job. All right, take a break. Guys, I love it when somebody fights an instinct and wins that battle. His foot went to go down, but it didn't. And we don't have to keep doing it over and over. He knows he's got to work on it. Well, let's talk about it. All right, I hope that uh, Joe and Brandon, I hope you guys see the improvement in that exercise because I definitely do, right? And I know, Joe, you were a little like, oh, but your rights are better than your lefts too. That's what I'm noticing. And I think you too, right? But we'll see, right? And I do want you to understand that if you drop your motorcycle, your confidence takes a hit. That's normal, right? People get a little gun shy after that happens. Don't worry about it. Preloaded Nation, we pick it up, 
and we try it again, that's all. But we identify what we did wrong. And the first time I asked you what happened, you said, I pulled the clutch in, bam. I, don't, I told him I could be blind, and if I hear your bike fall, I know that's what happened. Second time he dropped the bike, I said, what happened? He said, honestly, I don't know. I know, you pulled the clutch. It's the only way it's gonna fall. No power to the rear wheel. All right, any questions about that? All right, definitely keep practicing that. Moving on, exercise number five, single serpentine. These cones are 15 feet apart. Plenty of room, right? So now, I told you here I don't want you to lean. We haven't leaned yet. Now I want you to lean, right? And I don't want you to do this straight up. So, I also don't want you to go too fast. So in this exercise, this is an important exercise because this is an exercise that if my friend practiced it, he wouldn't have rear-ended me. Because sometimes, if you're riding out there and something happens and you do emergency braking, remember, we don't grab, squeeze, 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 front and rear brake. At the same time, what are you doing, Joe? Emergency braking, you're on the front brake, squeezing, rear brake, pushing. What else are you doing? What else should you be doing? Oh, he said it, downshifting, right? You have, that's why it's in that exercise where I had you riding up to me, I had you go up to second gear and I wanted you to practice downshifting while you're braking. Emergency braking, you have to downshift at the same time because if you're on the highway going 80 miles per hour and you're looking around and then when you look back, the cars in front of you aren't moving, you emergency brake. I do it on my car, in my car too. If I hit my brakes hard, I look in my mirror right away. And if the car behind me is not moving and you're on your motorcycle, if you're in sixth gear, you're screwed, right? Or even if you're in first gear, if you don't know, if you're not comfortable riding at slow speeds, you're still screwed, because this ain't the time to be trying to walk your motorcycle, right? That's why all of this stuff is relevant, but if you don't practice it enough in those moments, it's not gonna occur to you to do it, okay? So that's why this is important. What I don't wanna see is you guys going through here, because everybody wants to do it, right? Going too fast, clipping every cone, See how wide my bike is as far as from the cone? That's how I want you to approach this. I don't want you like this. Right, because you're gonna be, A, if you're doing that, you're not leaning. B, you're probably hitting every cone. The purpose of this exercise is to turn the handlebars. Remember, if we're going fast, what do our handlebars wanna do? They wanna straighten out. So obviously, you're not gonna be able to do this if you're going too fast. I want you to be wide so it's forcing you to lean. I want you to, yeah, you guys are gonna be coming this way. I'm gonna be standing right here, and if I'm not there, look at my camera. Head and eyes, lean the motorcycle. Counterbalance, meaning keep your body straight up and down. Let the bike lean under you, right? We don't lean with the motorcycle unless we're going higher speeds. Low speeds, we counterbalance, right? Counterbalance. Um, you guys are gonna come down, then go around, whatever side you started on the first time, start on the other side the next time. What do you got, Joe? Uh, worst case scenario, if I have to do a fast break, if I like emergency break, mm -hmm. and I don't have time to downshift, what's the worst case scenario if I just pull my clutch in and using my brake, both brakes to brake? Well, it all depends. Downshifting is the habit. You're gonna always have time because as soon as you hit the brake, you should be downshifting. You might not have time, maybe you won't have time to get down to first gear, but you can get out of sixth gear, right? That's my whole point. And it might be a situation where you stop and you don't have to worry about the gears because nothing's coming behind you. But if you're in the habit of already, always, always doing it, you're gonna do it anyway. You're gonna get down as low as you can get down. First gear is the, that's where you'd like to be, right? All right, uh, so Joe asked, what if I don't have enough time to downshift? And that was my answer to him. I'm sorry, I should have. I should, have read, I should have said what your question was first. Any other questions? All right, I'm gonna demonstrate this for you guys. All right, and sometimes the way the person's leaning, it looks so fluid that it looks like they're going fast, but they're not. So you have to split the difference in this exercise. Don't go too fast where you can't lean. Don't go too slow where you, I'm sorry, don't go too slow where you can't lean, and don't go too fast where you can't make it through the gates. All right? This is also getting you familiar with transitions. Transitions. Don't go through here turning like this, because you're losing space. Show the motorcycle with the boss. Turn, turn, turn. And this is getting you uh, ready for evasive maneuvers. It's getting you ready for the figure eight. It's getting you ready for the offset double serpentine. 
That's what it's getting you ready for. All right? All right. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of you, man. Don't worry about it. Lean. Head and eyes, straight ahead. Okay, so when I went through there, I'm not using any rear brake, but I'm still covering it. Because if I see I'm coming up on the second cone in front of me too fast, and I'm leaning, I just have to tap the rear brake to correct me, put me right back where I want to be, and then I'm good. I'm just staying wherever I am. I remember when Brandon was pulling up, I told him, wherever you, as you're pulling up, wherever you are in the friction zone, stay there. Wherever you are with your preload, keep it there, and just use the rear brake to control your speed. I'm giving you less to worry about, right? When you get more comfortable, then you can start messing with the clutch and stuff. But I find that the more stuff that's moving around, the more the odds are that your bike's going to start doing stuff like this. Where if you just keep this where it is, keep this where it is, and just use the rear brake to control your speed, everything should be smoother, smoother. All right? Any questions? I've been practicing my uh, throttle lock. And it's probably a disadvantage, but I've been practicing. Okay, so I'm glad you brought that up, Joe. So when we were in exercise number three, I was telling Joe, give me some more preload. And he kept clicking this thing. And I'm like, is that a throttle lock? And he was like, yeah, no, 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 no. We need to develop clutch control, throttle control, control of this rear brake. You're not developing any clutch control if you're letting something hold it there. You need to be, able, you need to be in control of that. That's the boss. You want to be an assistant boss. No. You're going to be the boss of this motorcycle, so no throttle lock. Throttle lock's for the highway, right? When, when really, that's cruise control. So, all right. Any questions? All right. Nice. Lean it. See, you're hugging the cones. You're hugging the cones, you gotta go out wide. There we go. There we go, it's only his first time doing it. His handlebars are going like this. When really it's just transition, transition. But he worked it out. Start out nice and wide. Start out wide. Good, start out wide. Lean, good, lean. Good, lean. Rear brake. Too much speed, too much speed. So he missed the gate because he's too much speed. And that's the thing, people wanna do this fast. You don't need to, speed is not gonna help you like everything else out here. Good, lean it. Good, lean it, turn it, turn it. Good, turn it. Turn it and lean it, going too slow. All right, so right now you're kind of turning like this. When you turn, turn. Turn, a little bit slower. If you see that second cone coming up on you too quick, rear brake. Good, good, good. Looking at every cone. Good, lean it, lean it, keep your speed up, keep your speed up, good, good, lean it, lean it, going too slow. Yeah, it's like you got to split the difference. 
You don't want to go too fast. You don't want to go too slow. You go too slow, you can't lean. Good, lean it, keep your speed right there. Lean it, there we go. Good, good, you're good. Keep your speed right there. Good, there we go. Nice. You good, Joe? You good? Last time, you turn next. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to exercise number six, the infamous U-turn. Brandon, that definitely started coming along. That's the other benefit of this haul. When you guys go home and you watch this, you know, you're gonna hear me talking better than you did when you were trying to ride through these things, but you're gonna, more importantly, you're gonna see yourself, the improvements, right? So this exercise, you have to pay attention to the speed. Speed is not your friend with most things out here. In this case, it's making you have to make decisions quicker and do things quicker if you're going fast. So you can't go too fast, you can't go too slow. So that's something to work on. You have to be comfortable leaning the motorcycle at slow speeds, all right? Not so slow that you can't lean. Any questions on that? All right, good. Exercise number 60, infamous U-turn. Remember I said when you were in exercise number four, the right and left turns, I said whatever speed you're at, whatever, wherever you are in the friction zone, stay there, wherever you are with your clutch, I mean, with your throttle, stay there. Same thing here, if the speed is appropriate. If you're going too slow, you gotta speed up. But on the approach to this U-turn, that's your time to get your speed together, right? I don't want you going so slow that you're making the turn straight up. I wanna see lean. I don't want you going so fast that you're doing a momentum U-turn, leaning. I want you to be at the appropriate speed, six to 10 miles per hour, turn your head and your eyes. I almost feel like I'm, listen guys, I know it doesn't feel comfortable, but I'm still gonna always say it to you because it's so important for you to be in the habit. I was telling Joe about this. When you're out there in the real world, if you're in the habit of not turning your head and your eyes, that's how shit happens because stuff happens fast out there, right? Appropriate speed. This is 27 feet, by the way. Three parking spaces, 27 feet. This box is 18 feet. If you want to go for it, fine. Nobody's going to be going for this today. But I want you to know, I can't stress this enough, it's not necessary to make a U-turn this tight on your motorcycle. It's just not, all right? As long as you're within 24 feet, that's fine. So Robert, how come your box is not 24 feet? I like 27 feet. You, just because it's 27 feet doesn't mean you have to use it all, right? And then when you go back and watch this video, you watch where you started your U-turn. Because I've had people start here. And then they're right on that line. And they're pissed at themselves because in their brain, they needed all 27 feet. But when they go back and watch it, but this is what I talk about situational aware. You have to know where, you should know where the motorcycle is. I have a general idea of where it is, right? Speed is appropriate. Throttle, frick, I'm keeping it loaded. I'm in the friction zone. Head and eyes. Now, this is not the exorcist, so not everybody can look all the way back. Just look as far back as you can. And as you progress in the turn, you're gonna wind up looking where you're going anyway, right? Head and eyes, handlebars. Lean the motorcycle. Keep it there, right? Come all the way around. If you need to use the rear brake, drag the rear brake through that U-turn, you can do that as well, all right? I want you to commit to the lean right away. People lose a lot of space because when they go to make a U-turn, that initial lean, they don't like the way it feels. So they barely lean, and then when they're at the top of the U-turn, they look at these cones and see how close they are, and now they wanna lean. So they made that turn a lot wider than it had to be. So you turn your head and your eyes, turn your handlebars, at that same time, lean the motorcycle. Nothing extreme, right? I don't want anything extreme in here, especially in three parking spaces. Slight lean, 
Slight handlebar turn, head and eyes. Listen to my throttle. All right, that's a good speed. Head and eyes. That's with no brake. Head and eyes. But I'm being consistent. When I lean the motorcycle, I keep it at that lean. When I turn my handlebars, I keep them turned. When I turn my head and my eyes, I keep them turned. Everything is consistent, right? Yeah, none of this, don't do this, right? If you feel, uh-oh, and you open up the clutch and the motorcycle goes out wide because speed is always gonna widen your turn, that's fine. Just don't put your foot down, all right? Don't look at the cones. Look where you want to go. First time you guys go through, that's how you're gonna do. You're gonna go straight through. You see, I'm not leaning a lot at all. I'm really not. Second time, I'm going to have you stop and make a U-turn. Third time, you're going to stop, make a U-turn, and stop. Commit to the lean right away. See, when we're committing to the lean, it's almost like, almost like, Exercise number three, trust and believe. Almost. Because I'm not asking you guys to, from a stop, start turning right there. You can go forward a little bit if you want and then make the turn, right? Extreme is to just do it with the handlebars turn and fall. I'm not asking you to do that. And then next I want you to stop and then stop. Now, lastly, when you make these U-turns, when you get to the end of the U-turn, you should be facing straight. I don't want to see you come out of the U-turn going like this or like this because, again, now we're de dealing with control. You should be in control of that motorcycle, bringing it out of the turn. This is, again, a timing thing, so you're facing the right way. Use the rear brake when it's appropriate. Drag it. Not too much. Any questions? Then we're going to do the same thing going right. All right, let's do it. Jerry told me, I can't do this in, th in uh, two parking spaces. And guess what I told him? Who cares? Not necessary. But if it's something he aspires to do, then he can practice it. Nice. And keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Because he, he kind of... Throttle was low going through there. No head and eyes. Joe, you gotta turn your head. And your, you're not turning your head and your eyes at all. You're like this the whole time. And if you're like this here, I know that's what happened to you out there with that car. I know it is. You gotta look where you're turning, right? And right there, a little bit more rear brake. And don't worry about hitting the cone, man. You hit the cone and you hit the brake. Don't worry about hitting the cone. All right, let's try it again. And that's speed. Too much speed. Good. Keep it loaded. Too much speed. Too much speed. Keep it loaded. Don't give it too much rear brake. Don't give it too much rear brake. Nice. Good. Rear brake, rear brake, rear brake. Nice and easy, nice and easy. He's compensating for going too fast at the last minute. He's swooping the handlebars. Good. Keep the speed right there. Now you're going too slow. Give me a little more speed. Head and eyes. There we go, it's coming together, it's coming together. There we go. Oh, much better. Good, stay at that speed, head and eyes, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. All right, we gotta work on those head and eyes, good job.
Nice, like butter, baby. Nice, Jerry. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. I let that go, Robert. Huh? I let the clutch go. Well, you pulled it in first. Because if, you, if the clutch stays the way it was when you started, it would just go around. Remember, it doesn't need a lot of power to stay up. If you pull it in, you take all the power away. But because it's lean, it's just, it's physics, it's gonna fall. So remember, keep in mind, if you're making a turn and you lean this much, you know, it's not that big of a deal. You pull in the clutch, you still have some room to correct it. The more you lean, the more reliant the power is to the rear wheel to keep the bike up. So if you pull a clutch in, it's a heavy bike. If you pull a clutch in at any point going that slow, it's gonna fall. But when you feel like falling, the answer is to open it up. But you just say, ah, oh, it's going down, and you, go, you put a foot out and you give up. But don't, that's gonna come with time. Don't worry about it, it's gonna come with time. All right, you turn. Straight through. Nothing changes. Because you can go straight first and then just make the turn. Keep it loaded. Good. Keep it loaded. Rear brake. Keep it loaded. There you go. Straight through. Straight through. Get the speed up. Head nice, rear brake, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Come to a stop over there. Ah, you got this. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. Oh my God! Dude, shut that off. You go back and watch this. You started that turn, and the way you had your handlebars turned, if you would have kept them turned, you were right here. You were in 18 feet. I can't wait for you to go back and watch that. But then at the last minute, you went like that, and that's the only reason you're over there. That's, it's important that you see that, because if this is a goal, right. you were there. The hardest part is the first part. You got that part and then you opened it up. So good job. We're gonna be going right next. Good. Whoa. Straight through. Straight through. Good. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Keep the handlebars turned. There we go. Smooth like butter, baby. Get in here, Joe. Very nice. Definitely more comfortable right turns than lefts. All right, straight through. Your rights are definitely better than your lefts. You look beautiful going feel right. Better. Yeah, man. Nice head and eyes. Nice. All right, a little wide there, but you corrected it. Got Joe Lewis here. Another gold wing just showed up. Keep it loaded, Joe. All right, don't come in here until the next one goes out. Stop over here. Nice. Figure eight. Figure eight. Figure eight. All right, a little bit too much speed on that one. That's why you went wide. Stop over there. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. 
Open up that clutch. Straight through, Joe. Straight through. Good. So he slows down at the top. You make it scary for yourself when you slow down like that. That's a good job. Good job. Straight through. Straight through. Keep the speed up. Keep the speed up. Keep the speed up. Watch that foot. Almost hit that, that um, passenger uh, footboard. All right, come to a stop over there. Good, keep it loaded, keep that, good. Come to a stop. All right. See, keep the speed up, keep the speed up, right there. There we go, Joe. Looking good, Joe. Straight through. You told me that back there. <laughs> don't overthink this, man. You don't have to back up. You got plenty of room. Don't overthink this. You got this. Take a break after this. Head and eyes. Figure eight next. Take a break. Figure eight next. Nice. All right, make sure you keep your speed up throughout that whole turn, Joe. Right. Sometimes you get to the top and you slow down a lot, but <laughs> but you you don't, you know, you keep it low. You, you trust and believe, let's put it like that. Good, preload, open up that clutch. Good, open it up some more. Head and eyes, good, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Nice, Joe. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to exercise number seven, figure eight. Any questions on that U-turn? So again, Joe, your reluctancy to lean the motorcycle, this all stems back to exercise number three, trust and believe. Once you start trusting it and knowing that that's the answer, you know, because make sure that those passenger footboards are folded up. I mean, your ankle, your heel came this close to it. It's always worse for me because I'm looking at it happen in real time. And I'm like, ah! Oh, okay, thank God. Putting your foot down is playing Russian roulette with your ankle. It really is. And if you don't get hurt, there wasn't a bullet in the chamber. That's all that means. All right, so please, 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 that's the answer, all right? Trust and believe. All right, exercise number seven, the figure eight, guys. This is the same width as that U-turn box. The only difference now is you have to do a transition and make a left turn. This is 46 feet long. So I've given you some extra room here. When you come in here, just like I said before, a couple of times I told Joe, Joe, speed up, you're going too slow. Oh shit, we got two Joes now. Joe Lewis, not Joe Lewis. I told Joe, speed up a little bit because you're entering already going too slow. If you're going too slow, the fear of leaning is gonna be increased as it should be. Because if you lean the bike going that slow, it's going to fall, all right? And if you're going too fast, you're going to be wide as hell. So get your speed appropriate as you approach. When you get about right here, head and eyes, look at that green cone, and go for it. Don't rip yourself off. Don't turn and leave this much space here, because now it's going to catch you down there. You're going to have to make up for it down there. Head and eyes, hold the turn, looking at that green cone. When you get to the 12 o'clock spot, look at that green cone and go for it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't do this, just hold the turn. Don't start coming out here because we're not going to the corner. You go to that corner and after that, you're only going to the sides, right? Hold it. Now, if you're not comfortable making the next turn, I just want you to go out right here. But your goal is to go out on the left side of the green cone. If you can make that first turn and be on the left side of the green cone, make a mental note of that because now you have all the space you need 
to make the right turn whenever you choose to do that. If you're going to do the whole thing, head and eyes. Now, this transition, just like in the single serpentine, don't do it slow. Turn. And don't do it too late or too early. Again, coordination. Head and eyes. Look at that green cone. Use all the space provided. If you need it all, hold it. Hold it. Once you get to the 12 o'clock spot, head and eyes. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Again, I want you at the green cone or before it. I don't want you over here, but it doesn't matter if you're over here. You can still make it. Just going to have to lean more. All right? Do it twice. That's your exit. You get a ka-ching if you do it without putting the foot down or anything like that. Uh, any questions? I'm going to run through it. Um, and with Joe, what I wanted to tell you is, again, I want you to pay attention to staying in the friction zone. And realize you don't need speed, you just need power. Now, I'm not saying you don't need any speed, because I already told you, if you're going too slow, you'll fall. But if your speed's appropriate, I'm going to demonstrate the figure eight. And then I'm just going to do some circles. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to lean the bike all the way over until it's dragging, until the footboards are dragging. And I want you to see how, how slow I'm going to be going. And I'm not asking you to lean that much. I'm just asking you to lean it slightly, but do it consistently. And you'll be fine as long as you're not going too fast. And you'll know if you're going too fast because you'll be wide. Speed always wants to straight, straighten us out. Head and eyes. Look at that cone. Hold it. Hold it. Look at that cone. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Head and eyes. Head and eyes. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. So even if I do it in four parking spaces, my throttle's still the same, right? The only thing that's changing is how much I'm leaning and how much I'm turning the handlebars. See, I'm not going fast, right, Joe? But even leaned all the way over. So I'm, just, I'm trying to show you the extreme, and at that extreme, if I do anything off, if I pull the clutch in a little bit, too much, it's going to fall. It's that simple, all right? Because I'm not going fast enough to keep it up. All right? Any questions? All right, Jerry. Good job. Good. Head and eyes. Keep it loaded. Good. Come on. Come to me. There we go. Good. All right. All right. We're halfway there. A little bit more speed, Joe. Good job, Jerry. All right, Brenda was looking good this first time around. You got to that right turn. The right turns are his, his strength. Good, hold it, hold it, transition. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. 
Keep it loaded, come to me, head and eyes. Transition. Came out that too early. So all, only thing that happened there is when you were here, instead of continuing to come to me, you started this too early. Yeah. So you took away space. You still had it too. Yeah, he still had it. He just came out of it. He pulled the clutch in, but if he would have kept the frick, he would if he would have stayed in the friction zone, he had it. Good, head and eyes, Joe. Head and eyes. Good, 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 good. All right, and Joe did the same thing. Instead of him continuing to come to me, he's decided to start turning that way, and now you're losing space. <laughs> Cut himself short at the top. Come to me, come to me, come to me. Transition, good, keep it loaded. Good, come to me, come to me, come to me, come to me. Lean it, keep it loaded. Good, come to me, look at me, come on. Look at the exit. It's over here. Come on. Keep it loaded. Oh, man. <laughs> that was it. Put that foot down on the last turn. Good. Head and eyes. Come to me, Joe. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Joe got a big screen TV on his handlebars. <laughs> All right, this is it, Brandon. This is it, baby, this is it. Head and eyes. Come on, come on, come on. Woo, look at that U-turn. That was tight. Keep it loaded. Head and eyes. All right, too wide. That first U-turn he made was, oh my God, he was like right here, well away from the green cone. So now it's looking like his lefts are better than his rights. Nice. All right, so what you're doing is, when you go around the first turn, you're coming out of the turn right here. That's what's making this so tight. Come to me, you gotta hold it. You should be facing this way, and then transition. Now you got all this space, right? Come to me, don't, don't come out of the turn too early. Good, get the speed up, good. Head and eyes, come to me, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition, there we go. Good, 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 keep it loaded. Come to me, hold it. You gotta open the clutch a little bit more. Last time, last time, make it count. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Transition. Left turns look really good. Come to me, look at me. Come on, come on, come on. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, look at me. Oh man, you had it. Try it again, come back in.
Good job. Good. Look at me. Come to me. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Look where he is. He's right here. Good. Look at me. Come to me. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Keep it loaded. Come to me. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. Look at the exit. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Sometimes he's just not in the friction zone and up. And the motorcycle's falling. That's when the foot comes down. A little more speed, Joe. A little more. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Transition. Going again or are you good? You good? All right, guys, we're going to move on to exercise number eight, the offset double serpentine. All right. Brandon, congratulations. Dude, um, you're making like 18-foot U-turns on that first U-turn. You did it twice. Like, I remember you were like, yeah, it feels odd in exercise number four. You said it feels odd locking the handlebars. And you're doing it. Like, I was like, whoa. The green cone is here, and you're all the way over here coming right at me. I was like, holy crap. Then you messed up on the right turn. I said, I don't know what's going on. I thought his rights were better than his left. But um, that's outstanding. I can't wait for you to go back and watch that. The camera's not going to really pick up where you were, but oh my God, just I knew it was just a matter of time before you got it. So you were doing the same thing. Let your bike's on. The same thing, let's say the blue gold wing was doing. Not in the friction zone enough. Your preload's fine, because I can hear it. But you're not in the friction zone enough. So if you're not in the friction zone enough, yeah, you're going to feel the bike falling. But remember, if you feel it falling, that's going to pick it up. Don't put your foot down, all right? Don't put your foot down. Repetition equals retention. So I'm always going to keep saying it. People tell me all the time, I'm out riding. I hear you in my head saying preload, blah, 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 blah. Don't put your foot down. Open your clutch hand. That's all you need to do. All right, any questions on that? Outstanding. Exercise number eight, offset double serpentine. Now, like initially, Joe was making this figure eight. He would go around the first turn, and as he's coming back this way, he's coming out of the turn too early. So now he's just making this turn way tighter. That's why I told him, hold it. You heard me going, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now transition. You should be facing that way. Okay, keep that in the back of your mind for this exercise. See how my motorcycle's facing? I'm not like this, I'm like this, because when I go through this gate, I'm not going to just go right to the next gate. Is it possible? Yes. But it's way more difficult, you have to lean more. So I'm going to do the same thing I was doing over there, figure eight. So as soon as you come through this gate, exercise number five, dip the motorcycle. Get through, dip, transition, come over here. Head nice, look at that gate, handlebars. Don't go past this outside line on either side. That's the goal. So now, now when I get to this gate, I'm facing like this, not like this. Because if I come in like this and I don't lean a lot, I'm all the way over here and I still got to go through this gate. So, come out. Dip, head nice, this gate. When you get to this gate, head and eyes, look at the gate you came from. Hold it, there's that hold it again. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Don't start turning too early because now you're in this same position where you're doing this. I don't want that. I want you holding it, transition, head and eyes. So now you're coming through like this. Head and eyes, look at the gate you came from. Hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Head and eyes, transition. That's what you're doing all the way down. Head and eyes, hold it, hold it. Head and eyes, hold it, hold it. I'm gonna demonstrate it. Your goal when you're going through the gate, be closer to the outside cone. If you're closer to the inside cone, not impossible, but you're making it more difficult. We're gonna use the space wisely. Okay? 
wisely. Now, if you're making turns like Brandon, none of this matters. I'm going to go down the way I just told you. Coming back, I'm going to go down, going straight to the gates. Tip. Head and eyes, hold it. Head and eyes, hold it, hold it, transition. Hold it, hold it, transition. Hold it, hold it, transition. Hold it, hold it. So yeah, I'm, it's more work, but my head and my eyes, that doesn't change. I'm still looking at the same gate going for it. Look at the gate I came from, blah, 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 blah. All right? Make sure you're in the friction zone enough. If you feel like you're not in the friction zone enough and your hand is too far on the, on the, the uh, handle, move it closer to the motorcycle. Maybe that'll help you too. Sometimes if it's out here, you know, work it out. How many fingers are you using? All these things come into play. All right, let's do it, Jerry. See the swing out? And that's what you want, the swing out, nothing extreme. There we go. You swing out, transition, fall into the next one. Swing out, transition, fall into the next one. Very nice, Jerry. <laughs> you go. No, you go. Swing to the right. Hold it. Hold it. Nope. Got to hold that more. See, now you're going right to the gate. See? There we go, hold it. So Joe's going a little slow. I want him to go a little bit faster. There we go, transition. Good, watch that foot. And he's got that engine guard on the back, that'll do it. So the only thing you did is you didn't hold it long enough. If you don't hold it long enough, it's gonna get tighter and tighter as you go down. So when you come around here, the first one, the first turn wasn't bad. The second turn when you were coming this way, you turned a little bit, and then you were going right to that gate. You want to dip, transition, fall into the next one. Head and eyes, transition, fall into it. Come to me. Come on, transition. Good, look at the gate you came from. Hold it, hold it. Transition. There you go. Do it just like that. Hold that turn, hold it, hold it. Transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh. Good, 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 transition. Good, hold it. Look at the gate you came from. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. Ah, oh, you held it too long. Remember, we gotta transition quick. Don't transition slow. That's all he did there, he transitioned slow. Come to me, hold it, hold it, transition. Hold that turn, hold it, transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition, good. Hold it, hold, ah, ah. Straighten out the handlebars. Good. All right, hold that turn, Joe. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. There we go. Ah, too much speed. That little boost of speed. Watch that foot, get it up, open the clutch. Good, hold it. Good, slow down, hold the clutch, hold it, hold it, hold it. Nah, you went right to it. Hold it, we can still correct it. Hold it, hold it. Nah, everything's gonna be tighter now. Hold it, not impossible. Yeah. Joe, don't come in here while he's still in here. All right, go ahead, go ahead.
Keep it loaded. You got to lean it over. If you're going too slow, you can't lean. That's what's going on, Joe. You're going really slow. A little bit more speed. Good, slow down. Hold the turn, hold it, hold it. Transition. Hold the turn, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. Good, hold that turn, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. Not enough clutch, open the clutch. He's doing good, and then he doesn't have enough power to the rear wheel, and you feel falling. Good, hold that turn, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. Good, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Got to transition quicker, Joe, quicker. Last time, last time. Good, hold that turn, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. There we go, lean into it. Keep it loaded. Last time, Joe. Do it again, Brandon. Good. Slow down, slow down. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. There we go. Ah, too slow. All right, make it count, baby. Make it count. Hold that turn, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Transition. All right. All right, guys, we're gonna move on to exercise number 90, abominable snowman. It's not gonna be abominable today, but it's still there. Let's watch Joe. Abominable snowman. There's something in there for everybody. As, as you should be. All right, so the good thing about this uh, exercise, exercise number nine, the abominable snowman, is there's something for everybody. So if you're, if you're looking at it and it's like, uh, I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. The green cones just separate the circles. This circle is 27 feet wide. But remember, a circle's tighter than a box. 27 feet. 25 feet, 22 feet, 18 feet. You don't ever have to go any further than you want. You can make a U-turn right here and go right back out. When you guys come in here, if you're gonna make, again, we gotta worry about space. Don't give any space up. Don't start your turn from here because then it's gonna catch you over there. It might not be relevant in this circle. It might, but it might be. It's gonna be relevant the further you go up. So I want you to put your wheel right here in the vicinity of right here. And then don't commit to the lean right away. Hug these two cones. This is how we maximize our space. And then when you get up here, now you can commit to the turn. Again, for most people, you don't have to worry about all of that in 27 feet. But I want you to do it anyway. Get in the habit of doing it because as you go around, if you decide, okay, I'm gonna go to 25 feet, go back around again, come through the green cones, come over here, same thing. Wheel placement. Place your wheel right here. And then hug these two cones. Hug them. Remember I told you I didn't want you to hug my cones in the ser serpentine? Now I want you to hug them. See, it's always changing. And then when you get up here, commit. Go around. If you choose to go around twice, you can. Or you can go right back out. Or if you want to go to 22 feet, go around. And then do the same thing. Nobody's going up to the 18 foot box today, a box circle. Don't play yourself, it's not even necessary. Like I say it all the time, it's not necessary. Just do what you're comfortable doing. Are you gonna do this, Joe? If you are, this is your circle, 27 feet. Give it a try, put your wheels where they're supposed to be, keep it loaded, be in the friction zone enough. Joe, a lot of times you're going too slow. So you're actually making it scarier. You get to a, every time you get to the top of a turn, your speed just goes you trust and believe. Sometimes you put your foot down and your heel's coming so close to that, that, that guard on the back. Keep your speed constant the whole time you're doing these things. 
That's where the fluidity comes from. Keeping the speed constant is going to help you be fluid. If your speed's up and down, then you know. Uh. All right, let me demonstrate it. You guys might want to stand either here or there. Hug it, commit, and a nice. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Wheel placement, hug them, commit, head and eyes, hold it, hold it, hold it, lean the motorcycle. Wheel placement, hug them, commit, head and eyes, hold it, hold it. Wheel placement, hug them, commit. And so on and so forth. Any questions? Say it again. Just, just do a run using the edge of the cone. Using the edge of the yes, cone. I want to see how much you actually have to lean your bike because you. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Not much. If I go faster, I just got to lean more. But see, this is what people do out on the road. And on these type of motorcycles, that's why they crash. They go in and they turn too hot. And instead of them slowing down, they just say, hey, I'll just lean more. But this bike doesn't have the same lean angle as a sport bike. And next thing you know, boom. Trail braking, trail braking, trail braking. Yeah, you guys, you know. Jerry got the helmet on. That's why he was standing there. He's <laughs> Any more questions? All right, let's do it. Next. Nice, Joe. All the way over, Joe. Keep the speed up. Keep the speed up. Yeah, keep that speed up, Joe. Got Brandon here. Get the speed up, get the speed up a little bit. Head and eyes, you're looking right at the cones. Head and eyes, Jerry, head and eyes. Good control, man, good control. In that moment, most people would have put their feet out. He worked it out. I don't know what was going on there. The motorcycle was shaking.
<laughs> Brandon got confused. Hug him. Lean it. Too slow. Too slow. Yeah. Yeah. Can't you, you can't lean if you're going too slow. <laughs> yeah. Brandon really doesn't need all of this space. Ten push-ups. I owe you like 40 already, I think. The feet down, all that stuff. Oh yeah, he's right. I forgot about the push-ups for the foot down. Last time, last time! A little early, a little early on that. Keep it loaded, keep it loaded, keep it loaded. Good, good. Hug him, commit. Commit, keep it loaded. Good, good. Good, you're good, you're good. Too early. Started too early, that's all. Too early, Joe, too early. Last time! Good. Rear brake. Good. Keep it loaded. Ah. <laughs> All right, head over there. Got damn car horn on those gold wings. Too early, Joe.
see right here, Jerry is counter balancing. Head and eyes, nice smooth throttle. Very nice, very nice. All right guys, we're gonna move on to, well the bonus exercise is the keyhole. I didn't set up the maze, nobody's doing that keyhole either. So we're gonna move on to the bonus plus exercise, to lean or not to lean? That is the question. All right, so I already, I see Joe trying to figure it out like it's a crime scene. Brandon saying that it gets tighter. No, it does not get tighter. These cones are nine feet apart. And no, they don't get tighter. It's, it, it's gonna seem like it gets tighter if you're not doing it right. So the purpose of this exercise is we're kind of putting everything together that we've done today in the beginning. This is exercise number two, turning the handlebars, using the rear brake. The goal is to see how far you can get without hitting the cone, without putting your feet down, without going outside these white lines. And I had to add that because D was like, D said, so can I just go all the way out there and then come back? And no. Right? So I'm telling you, man, you got to be thinking about, oh, I'm thinking about everything. So, remember I told you don't hug the cones? Well, that doesn't apply here, really. So, as you're going down here, if you see that you've cleared one cone, I'm not going to count that cone. We clear one cone. If you get right here and you see you're not going to make it, let the bike lean to make it. That's why it's to lean or not to lean. You have to be able to know what to do based on what's going on. That's part of being the boss of the motorcycle. But if you're fine, keep it straight up. I'm going to demonstrate it. Now, my bike turns different than your bike and your bike. So it's going to be easier on the Harleys than it will on the Hondas. Not impossible, though. So what I mean is, remember I told you before in there, don't turn lazy? Same thing applies here. You can't come in here and then when you get here, do this because you're losing space that you, don't, you can't afford. You have to turn the handlebars full lock, especially if you're in that gold wing. As soon as you get here, full lock, but not so early that your bags are gonna hit the cone. All right? To lean or not to lean? All right, let's knock it out. So you can't be going fast at all. One. That's one. Next. Keep it loaded, baby. Woo! That's one. That's zero. Zero. All right, Jerry should be good, especially with this motorcycle. Slow down a little. All right, that's one. Slow down, Jerry. Too much speed, that's zero. I tell you, Joe's looking good, man. He's come a long way. So you got to turn that. You got to turn the handlebars right away. He ain't gonna make that. Right, zero. All right, I figured Jerry would beat the one, but right now he's tied. Slow down. One. Nope, still one. He's got to slow down.
Yep, oh, hit the first cone. He's out. Zero. Jerry, come on. Just slow down a little, slow down. Good. Good. Slow down, slow down. Two. Good. Three. Four. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I knew it. Last time. I knew that was coming from Jerry. Nope. One. Last time. Joe's scooting up on the seat. Hand the ball, turn him, lock him. Lock him. Nope, too early, he's gonna hit that cone. That's it, you hit a cone, you're out. Yeah, Jerry was just going too fast. Yep, that's it, he's done. All right guys, we're gonna move on to follow the leader, baby, follow the leader. We're moving on to follow the leader. This is very simple. Whatever I do, you do it and you do it the way I do it. If you hit a cone, you're out. Pull your motorcycle, let's see. Kid marks are over there, second bay. Pull right there in the middle. We're gonna do one circle around you. We're gonna blow our horn saying bye-bye. <laughs> Don't worry about it, you're not gonna be alone for long, whoever it is. If you put a foot down, you're out. You hit a cone, you're out. Put a foot down, you're out. If you, if I stop to make a turn and you just roll right through, you're out. Pull over there. If I stop in the middle and you stop over here, you're out. Do what I do, how I do it. All right? Uh, any questions? We work by the honor system. I don't expect you guys to turn each other in if you see something that I missed. But I'm going I'm to have a 360 camera pretty high up. So when I'm editing the video, if I catch something that you didn't, I'm going to have to blow you up in the video. I'm just letting you know. All right? All right, let me go get my camera and we can set up.
All right, guys, this is very simple. This is the slow race. The winner is the loser, meaning whoever passes the finish line first is the loser. It's the last wheel past these two, two cones. That's who wins, okay? Exercise number two, the slow ride. That's all this is. But you add some competition and then everybody gets freaked out. So keep your head and your eyes straight ahead. Don't worry about what's going on to the side of you. It happens all the time. People look, bam. If you put a foot down, you just stop and stay where you are. That's it, you're a tober feet. I'm gonna have my hand in the air. I'm gonna say on your mark, get set. My hand's gonna come down on go. If my hand comes down and your foot is still on the ground, just stay there, you're out. Um, and if you hit the lines that are on the side of you, you're out. Any questions? <laughs> On your mark, get set, go! Brandon, you're out. Joe, you're out. That's it, winner! All right, did you enjoy yourself? Phenomenal. Good, good. Do you remember what you rated yourself when you first came? One and a half. Any change in that number? I'll go three. Thank you. I, I was waiting for you to sandbag, man. No. Three, excellent. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I don't believe, I don't believe in that in. Preload nation needs to know that even VI preloaders sometimes have brain farts. <laughs> Listen, pleasure to meet you, man. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. All right. Hope to see you soon. Absolutely. <laughs> did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I did. Good, good. Um, you remember what you rated yourself when you first came out? Yes. What? One. A two. A two. Any yes. change in that number? Um, no, still two. Okay, good. Pleasure to see you again, man. Hope yes. to see you out here again. Thank you. All right. Uh, hi. Hi. You enjoy yourself? I did. It was great. Great practice. Tell everybody your name. Jerry Cassidy. And you're from? Savannah these days. These days, and what are you riding today? Uh, KTM Super Duke GT. Super Duke GT, and what do you give yourself rating slow speeds, one to 10? Uh, 10 a little, little bit better now than when I started. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, somewhere around the middle. Around the middle, five? Yeah, six, five, six. six. I like six better. Yeah. Always a pleasure, brother. Oh yeah, thanks for having me. Oh. Your it. mother had you, I just practiced with <laughs> you, man. <laughs> you enjoy yourself today? Oh, always, every time I come out here. Good, tell everybody your name. Joe Lewis. And you are from? Savannah, Georgia. And you ride? A 2012 Goldwing. All right. Um, if you had to give yourself a rating, 1 to 10, 10 being the best, slow speed, what are you giving yourself? Uh, today I give myself a 4, but usually I'm about a 5. And guys, I got to tell you, I was watching Joe do a few things, things that had me, had my butt cheeks clenching, and he never put a foot down. You've come a long, man, you've come a long way, man. I remember Joe sent me videos of him while he's working on his lunch break practicing and that's what this is about guys dedication always a pleasure brother always always all right man all right guys and that's going to do it practice session number 66 in the books great day you know no incidents um starting to get a little hot out here it's it's only 80 degrees it feels hotter than that because it's just direct sun but we got it in all right guys listen i hope you enjoyed this video and if you didn't forget about enjoying it i hope it helped you right because that's really the main goal i want you guys to learn from this stuff i want you to watch this and then i want you to go out and practice Practice these steps, particularly the warm up through exercise number four. That's what I really want you to practice and get under your belt and then move on to five and get comfortable with that. All of these exercises build on one another. That's not a coincidence. I set them up that way for a reason. All right, guys? Um, but if you are getting something from these videos, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. That definitely helps me out. Subscribing and liking the videos helps me out. It, for what I'm doing and how much time I put into it, all I ask you to do is do that. Subscribe and you only have to do it once. Liking, that's every video, <laughs> right? But it's free, you, don't, you know, unless you're a VI preloader, it's free, all right? Um, and if you're interested in becoming a VI preloader, there's a link in the description section. You can click on that and boom, you can take care of it, all right? All right, guys, spend more time being thankful for the things that you have and less time complaining about the things that you don't. 
seat time doesn't equal practice time, guys. And if you have time to ride your motorcycle, please make time to practice on it. Until next time.